we're now going to be taking a look at creating some toolpaths and I'm going to be creating this dinosaur toy. So I'm just going to reset everything back to how it was originally and delete all the toolpaths. Okay, so here you can see that I've got my dinosaur vectors. It's just an outside vector here. And then I've got these open vectors to create some of the detail. So if I select toolpaths, it will open up all of the toolpaths for me. And then I'm going to select to create a profile toolpath. That opens up the dialog box for profiling. Now with profiling, you can do this on the outside, you can do it along, or you can do it on the inside. So what I'm going to do is select a lung and it tells me to select the vectors for this. So I'm going to select that vector. I'm going to select that vector by pressing shift on the keyboard. And I'm also going to select that vector. So I've got three vectors selected. Now the finish depth, I don't want that to be 10 millimeters. I just want this to basically score the material. So I'm going to do that 0.1 millimeters. So very, very light. Profiling tool, if I select here, this will open up what we call the tool database. You can see that we've got some different sections for these. So I'm going to be using metric tools for this. So I'll expand that, expand wood or plastic. And you can see that I've got all of these different sections here. So let's expand the roughing and 2D finishing. And I'm just going to expand the 3D finishing and the V carving because I'll probably use some of these at a later stage. So let's select ball nose 1.5 millimeters and click select. Now if you want to change any of the parameters of this tool, you can do that by selecting the drop down and you can change the step down, step over, spindle speed, plunge rate, etc. Now the material thickness, I already have this set up, but I'll set it up again. So if you select to set up and then just enter a material thickness in there and then select OK. And when you're happy with that, you can either enter a name there or select calculate now and it will give the toolpath a default name. Here you can see this is called profile. Now, if you want to see what this actually looks like, if you right click on it, and select to simulate toolpath, it will give you a simulation of what you've just machined. So you can see that I've got these various cuts in the material. So if you want to delete the simulation, right click on that, delete. Let's take a plan view again, turn on the vectors. I'm going to select the eye. Again, I'm going to do a profile going to do this along again. The finish depth, let's make that, let's try 0.25 this time. The profiling tool, now this time I'm going to use a different tool, I'm going to use a V bit, so it's actually got a V groove on the tool. Select that, calculate now. Select the outside, select toolpaths, create a profile toolpath again. Now this time, I want this to go on the outside and I want it to go to a finished depth of 10. So it automatically assumes that you're going to cut the part out. So it will automatically go to 10 millimeters. Select a tool, let's say a six millimeter end mill. Now you can change the step down of this. At the moment, it's 2.5. Let's say that you only wanted this to be, let's say two millimeters. You can just change that in there and then select Calculate Now. Now if you want to turn any of these toolpaths off in the preview, you can do that by selecting the light bulbs. So these light bulbs here on the left actually affect what's going on in the 2D view. Okay, you can see it there in gray, but you'll still have a toolpath around there that's in red. So if I rotate around, you can see that I've got a toolpath that's going to a depth now that's controlled by the third light bulb here. So I can turn them on or off like so. 
If you want to simulate this, go to Toolpaths, simulate all of the toolpaths, and then simulate the toolpaths. And you can see that that's cut my part out. Now, if I want to see what this actually looks like when finished, select Simulation, and I can select here, which will delete the waste material. Now, you can automatically delete the waste material. Sometimes art can won't do that properly because it doesn't know what is waste material. There might be a part of waste material that you actually want to keep. So if that doesn't work, if you can select delete pick material or keep pick material. I tend to use keep pick material and then just select the material that I want to keep. Now it doesn't matter if you accidentally delete the wrong thing because you can always undo it. So if I select to keep that and accidentally delete the wrong thing, I can just select undo and then go back. If I want to change the actual material of this, just select material and then let's change it to, let's say medium oak and apply. And then I can also add a depth color. So it basically adds a color to anywhere that I've created a cut and then select apply. And you can see that I can select any color from the color palette and it will change the color of this dinosaur. Now, if you're worried about the parts actually moving when you're actually creating the tool path, let me just delete the simulation. I'll show you how you can do that. So let's turn the tool paths on. And I'm going to edit this last tool path. And what I'm going to do is add what we call bridges. So these will actually hold the piece in place to the material. So it adds a little bit of material so you don't actually machine that so it holds it in place. So let's add a constant number, let's say two of them. And I want these to be 10 millimeters by let's say five millimeters. And you can either do 3D bridges, which are easier to break off, or you can do 2D bridges, which just basically leave the material at a specific depth and a length. So I can then select add bridges, and you can see that it's added these two bridges here. If I want to move them, I can select edit bridges, and then you'll see that I get these blue markers and I can just move them around. Let's say that I want one on the back there, and I'd rather have this one, let's say, on the foot there, so I can file it off or sand it off afterwards. So when I'm happy with that, select to calculate now, and you can see that I get these markers. So that's basically just saying that I'm not machining that area. So now, if I go to simulate these, it should look a little bit different, because you can see that it's not removed that material now, and it's actually staying within the material. So it's not going to fly off the machine. 